My name is Jaina. I'm the team leader for Accessible Brain. I am an accessibility cult consultant and designer, and I also consider myself a disability activist, and I live in Brooklyn, New York. Hi, uh, my name is Laura. I'm a creative technologist and developer, and um, I'm from Long Island, New York. Hi, I'm Sianna. Can you guys get over? I'm standing right now. Uh, I'm Sianna. I am a sensory artist. I was the sound uh, designer for this project, and I come here all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you. And we also have one more member of our team who sadly couldn't be present tonight. His name is Balam Soto, and he uh, comes from Hartford, Connecticut. He is a new media artist, and he's really great. Uh, yeah, we miss you, Balam. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to dive into it first. I'm going to talk about shortly uh, the mission of our project. Um, so uh, creating an accessible brain meant creating a fully accessible place for people with disabilities um, to engage with very few limitations. That's what we were thinking uh, going into this project. And this simple data visualizer creates shared experiences um, by only responding to movement uh, operative by people with limited mobility. And as an installation, this would create um, an interactive social space for people of all abilities to connect while experiencing the same environment. The inspiration was, um, I, I have a disability and I'm really passionate about disability rights. I'm a disability activist, disability rights activist, and um, I, I think there should be more art in the world that um, represents people with disabilities. And so going into this hackathon, I was so excited to um, be working on a project that uh, brings representation to a group that is usually marginalized. Um, yeah. So with that mission in mind, we just uh, we were thinking what would be one of the most accessible, I guess, sensors to use. And so um, within this, ha so in this particular hackathon, uh, we the I guess the default. Um, I guess like the brainwave, like EEG model, uh, like reading a sensor was the Muse. And so we decided to use and research that. Um, but we went through a couple of uh, issues. Um, first was hardware, uh, because it, the Muse wouldn't connect to some of the computers. It would connect to my computer, thankfully. And we found out later it was because the Muse could only uh, it, it emits like the low energy Bluetooth, so only uh, pretty much up to date uh, computers are able to sense the uh, Bluetooth emitting from the Muse. So another issue was the software. So as soon as we got uh, the Muse connected, the issue is that we couldn't the the OSC data was sending, but it wasn't being read by the program. So what we ended up doing was because I have a background uh, in programming and one of my stronger languages is Python, I decided to just take one of their scripts that they had on their website and just really just rewrite it. Um, so what, ended up do what we ended up doing was taking the OSC data from the Muse, reading it, and sending it back to a program of choice for our um, installation. So, um, the, the sound that we chose to use uh, was designed to inspire relaxation um, because we're targeting such a marginalized group, um, different disabilities can, are, are not always visible. So, you have sound sensitivities, which is called misophonia. That's something that I live with. So, I'm very sound sensitive, so different sounds trigger very not so pleasant emotions. Um, so the type of music that we decided to incorporate into this project are very relaxing. Um, there's no constant beat or there's no regulated um, boom, 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 boom for people that don't understand what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> and um, then there's no high pitch. There's no uh, audio distractions. There's no, there's a lack of predictability. So there keeps your, the sound keeps your attention. Um, and it lowers your stress levels, uh, it increases relaxation, and it also increases attentional awareness. So by this, we are uh, activating and increasing the alpha waves uh, throughout the brain. 
Um, as far as the visuals, uh, they're non-emotive and they're unfamiliar. They're very abstract. Uh, so it, it, it decreases the critical thinking as you're engaging uh, the installation. Uh, they disarm distraction and they uh, follow the user's movement. Um, this installation is safe for people with limited mobility. We decided to go with, uh, well, thankfully with the accelerometer that, the, that is included in the Muse, we decided to go with movements that someone that is um, bound to a wheelchair would be able to also engage. So the forward and backwards movement, or the left and the right with the head, and forwards and backwards as well with the neck. Um, so people that are in wheelchairs that are... Um, have or that are bound to wheelchairs specifically um, are not able to dance, but this new medium allows them to see how their body and their brain respond to stimuli. So we're very proud of this project and, and what it's developed into because it definitely didn't start off like this. So here goes our uh, demo and uh, I'll go ahead and play the music. <laughs> 